everyone and welcome to your World Book Day assembly. If you are in year seven or year eight, or if you read the newsletter, you know that we have a book of the week every week at John O'Gorn School. If you're year seven or year eight, you usually get to listen to the first chapter of the book in your reading lesson. And a couple of weeks ago, one of the girls in year seven said to me, you say that you love all these books and you say that all authors are fantastic. And I thought to myself, actually, yeah, I do say that. But I said to her, I wouldn't pick a book that I didn't love and that every author I've ever been in contact with have always been fantastic, generous, kind people. So I thought I'd prove that to you today. I want to talk to you a bit about a couple of the books we've had as Book of the Week this academic year, and then introduce you to the authors. Way back in September, one of the first books we had as Book of the Week was A Kind of Spark by Elle McNichol. And this book has been read by loads of students and lots of staff members as well. It centres around a girl called Addie, who lives in Juniper outside Edinburgh. And when she learns in school that women from her village were burned during the witch trials for simply being different, this strikes a chord with Addie because she knows what it's like to feel different and she knows what it's like to feel like she's living on the outside of things. Addie is autistic and she takes up the fight for her village to apologise to these women for what happened to them. In this book, we also meet Addie's teacher, Miss Murphy, who is truly awful. And every time a student returns a book, we have a discussion about Miss Murphy and just how horrible she is. I contacted Elle McNichol and asked her if she could send us a message and she very kindly has. Hi there, this is Elle McNichol. I'm the author of A Kind of Spark and Shows Who You Are and uh, Like a Charm right now. Um, I'm answering some, a couple of questions for World Book Day video. Um, and the first one is from Lena in 7H. So hi, Lena. Um, and you asked, is Miss Murphy based on a real person? And the answer is, I mean, that's for anyone that doesn't know, Miss Murphy is a teacher in a kind of spark. Uh, the answer is yes, she's based on a real person and she's also still alive. Um, I'm not that old, I'm in my 20s, so they are still alive and still going. Um, yeah, I toned it down a little bit, actually, for a kind of spark. Um, a very, very, very tough, um, <laughs> tough, tough person and did not like students that were different in any way. Uh, she likes some students, just like Miss Murphy likes, you know, she likes Emily, she likes Jenna, um, she likes a lot of the boys. Um, you know, she liked, she liked some students, but she didn't like those of us that were a bit different. So, um, I never forgot that and I put it in a book and, um, hope she likes it, hope she reads it. But, um, yeah, so that, that's, she is based on, on a real person and actually, it's interesting, I get a lot of um, people going like, oh, that would never happen, you know, someone like that would never exist. And I think that those comments always sort of show that that person lives in a very neurotypical world, meaning a, a world that's not like the one I live in. And and it's um, actually, it's a really interesting character because I get a lot of people that get in touch about it and they say, oh, I know someone like that. Or my daughter has a has a has an after school care that's like that. And, you know, that she's still very much uh, alive and kicking in many ways. So... That's why she's the villain. Thank you so much for that question, Lena. I hope that answer is not too depressing. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, definitely is a uh, based on real life, as a lot of people's books are. We all kind of draw from our own experience. And then Mrs. Lopez has asked, "What is the most unexpected or rewarding reaction you've had to your books, particularly regarding the inclusion of neurodivergent characters?" Well, there's lots of things, and I'll probably think of a ton more once I finish this uh, video. But some of the most moving reactions are when people read the book and they discover that this is what they they are they um they've always felt a little bit out of place they've always felt a bit uh not you know like they don't fit in or that there's something a bit different about them and then they they read this book and some of the time they take it to their doctor or they take it to a teacher or even their parents and the book is the sort of first step in the journey to getting diagnosed as autistic or having learning difficulties or just being neurodivergent in, it, in another way and that's really special it's really special to get letter you know there's a little girl in Canada who became diagnosed um and a kind of spark is the reason she likes to she's happy and proud of it and that's amazing and then when I, I'm told that doctors use the book now to give to patients um that's incredibly moving when people say that they've read it in hospital or they've read it in lockdown I had a really fantastic little girl 
I think her name was Jess, but I, I don't want to, maybe not, but um, she came up to me at an event in Edinburgh when I was promoting like charm and she came up and said, you know, I was in isolation for 20 days because my family kept getting COVID um, one after the other. So she was locked up for 20 days and she read a kind of spark twice and she said that she really, really got her through that isolation. So there's lots of things. There's lots of reasons to be proud. You know, it's won awards. It's won the Blue Peter Book Award. It's won the Watterson's Prize. It's being made into TV and it is a proud thing to have a book that's being made into a TV show that will hopefully reach lots of people and um, it's won some awards in America but but ultimately the thing that you're most proud of and the reactions that mean the most are when people come up and say oh this book really helped me through a tough time or this book really helped me um, accept a part of myself or discover a part of myself so that's what means the most that's why I wrote the book I wrote the book because I wanted a book like that all my books actually all three of them I really wanted books like these when I was um, 11 12 and I was reading so much I was reading more than I've ever read I was getting through books like so quickly and, um, and I never saw a character like me so I really wanted sort of like a contemporary book that really reflected uh, my reality and, and was a, a mirror and showed me that I could exist in a book. I really wanted, you know, an adventure with high stakes where there's lots of intrigue and twists and plot turns and fun and, and, and that's, you know, where you're the main, you're the hero, you're the person that saves the world basically at the end of the day. And I also really wanted to be magical and have powers and 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 you know this book is based on a lot of the kind of daydreams and, and adventures I wanted to have when I was 12 so I write the books that um that would reflect and, and represent 12 year old me and the luckiest and best part of my job now is that it also re represents people who are young today and who also still want to see themselves in books so that's kind of a long answer but and that's what's so great about world book day is that we can all celebrate reading we can all celebrate the books that represent us or the books that are windows into other people's experiences for us and um i don't have a beret on or i would i would be wearing a beret because rami i'm like a charm wears a beret uh, every day and that's a really easy world book day costume just putting a beret on um but um those are some good questions and thank you so much for for checking out my books and i really hope uh, you like them and happy happy world book day and thanks for your questions lena and mrs lopez thank you so much to elle for sending us that message we really appreciate it if you want to read a kind of spark you'd have to come to the library and join the reservation list because i don't have any copies in i would like to show you the book so i could sort of show you what it looks like it's like that but i can't because i don't have any copies kind of like this one this one is a book that was book of the week only a couple of weeks ago and as you can see i don't have any of those left either sorry all out this book is called the loneliest girl in the universe and it's by lauren james first of all lauren james is a favorite of mine because she has a wicked sense of humor and we have several of her books in the library but The Loneliest Girl in the Universe is a popular one um, because it's a bit different. It's about a girl called Romy and she is the only surviving crew member on a spaceship heading to a different solar system. So she really is the loneliest girl in the universe. Now this book I didn't read to the year seven and year eights because this is the sort of book you kind of want to jump into feed first and just get immersed into the universe of it. Haha, <laughs> universe, she's in space. Um, this book is a perfect mix of suspense and science fiction with a dash of romance. I'm not going to tell you too much more about the book, you'll just have to come and read it. But I contacted Lauren James and she has sent us a message about her new book. Hello John of Gaunt School, I'm Lauren James, the author of Green Rising and many other science fiction books. This is a climate change thriller about a group of teenagers who develop the power to grow plants from their hands and they use that to save the world from climate change by rewilding the planet. I just wanted to say happy World Book Day, I hope you all have an amazing day dressing up in your costumes and reading lots of wonderful young adult and middle grade books. Before I tell you about the last book, I want to send a quick hello from somebody else. Just over my shoulder, you can see I'm the Minotaur by Anthony McGowan, another popular choice for Book of the Week a couple of weeks back. I sent a message to Mr McGowan. Unfortunately, he was too busy to send me a video back, but he sends a big hello and happy World Book Day to the readers of Jordan Gorn. So thank you very much. The last book I want to tell you about is Black Brother, Black Brother by Jewel Parker Rhodes. Now, I already knew I was going to love this book because I'm a big fan of hers. But when I read the book to year sevens and year eight, it was a bit of a miracle, I have to say, because the library was completely silent. You could have heard a pin drop. You could have heard a pin drop in Gloucester Hall. That's how quiet it was. Black Brother, Black Brother centers around Dante and his brother Trey. 
they are from the same family and they attend the same school, but because their skin tone is different, they have a very different experience in life. Dante gets treated very unfairly, not only by the school bullies, but also by the school staff, which is very difficult to read. He decides to get his own back through sports, through fencing, in fact. That's one of my other favourite things about this book. I think it probably will be the only book I ever have that centres around fencing. Now, on off chance, I sent a message to Jill Parker Rhodes, even though she lives on the other side of that great pond, the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, and if you were in the library on the Tuesday morning when I received the message back, you would have seen a slightly tearful and very giddy librarian because I'm a massive fangirl and I was so excited she sent us a message. Ladies and gentlemen, Jewel Parker Rhodes. Hello students, happy World Book Day. I am so glad that you like the novel Black Brother, Black Brother. You can see that I'm wearing my Heritage is Lit t-shirt with a Black Brother, Black Brother a title on the side. Black Brother, Black Brother is one of my most personal books. I sent your librarian a picture of my family uh, when we were all much, much younger. And in the picture, you can see that my husband is white and my daughter looks like him and my son looks brown like me. Because of that, in America, they have been treated differently. My son has experienced bias and discrimination, and my daughter has been white appearing, and then sometimes people feel free to show how racist they are, and she needs to speak out and say, no, that's wrong. That's the wrong attitude to have towards fellow humanity. I wanted to show that genetically we are all one race, one human family, and something as superficial as skin tone should not determine how you get treated any more than whether your eyes are blue or brown, whether you're tall or short, whether you're male or female. Um, we are just genetically a community, a human race. I want to tell you about my next book, which is available there in the UK. It's Paradise on Fire. And this is also about climate change, but climate change with a social justice twist. I hope you get a chance to read it because climate change is having a disparate impact on people of color and poor people in particular. We all, again, are one family, and we need to save our home. We need to save planet Earth. So, happy World Book Day. Thank you so very much for reading my work, and look for Black Brother, Black Brother, the movie. Bye-bye. Thank you so much to Jewel Parker Rose for sending us that message. It really, really did cheer me up no end. That's uh, it for our World Book Day assembly for this year. Uh, don't forget on World Book Day, as per usual, there are lots of activities in the library. There will be some murder mysteries uh, to solve. There might be some masked reader as well. Mm, what could that be? You will hopefully see a lot of grown-ups uh, dressed up looking quite silly. But don't forget, you can also get yourself a free book. So come to the library to get your World Book Day token. If you've never used one before, it couldn't be simpler. All you need is one of these and you take them to one of the participating retailer and you can get a World Book Day book absolutely free. If you have your eyes on something else, you can use this token as a one pound off the book that you would want. So ladies and gents, see you in the library on World Book Day. Have a fantastic day. Bye.